today I rebuilt and fairly loosely installed the uh, the drag link or the tiller rod as they call it um, that's this rod here that connects the the drop arm on the steering box to the swivel axle uh, looks kind of banana shaped and bent but it's supposed to be that way and amazingly this is one of the few details that I actually have instructions on how it all goes together and how it uh, how it all fits uh, although to be honest it isn't really that complicated this one um, I've replaced all the springs and the balls and the, the little sockets and things so it's all it's all completely rebuilt and the only really tricky thing was making sure the the little uh, socket here could move freely in the tube so everything moved and uh, and then just clamping it carefully in the vise because you don't want to crush the tube so that you can screw this this end piece in and that's the uh, this piece here gets screwed in and then held with a cotter pin um, none of these are done up tight yet so they're not really fitted on the tapers and I did figure out what the difference is between the two the two drop arms that I've got um, it's not just the fact that this one is straight and this one's bent. I believe oops, it's also to do with the um, the angle. So if you imagine this goes that way. If this goes on here, it's a little bit hard to see. But this one brings the, the drag link closer to the middle of the car which would cause me a problem because as you can see there's there's not a lot of clearance on all of this so if you work the steering it's not too bad that direction but when you come back the other way uh, it all starts getting a bit close so it does actually hit the grease nipple there on the shackle just before you hit full lock. Um, I think that'll be better once the engine's in the car, because at the moment there's no weight on the suspension. So the springs are going to flatten a bit, of course, when I've got the engine in. Uh, this shackle will move back slightly, not much. Um, hopefully that'll be enough clearance, or maybe I can get a lower profile uh, grease nipple for there. I don't want to go messing around with the drag link, drag link trying to bend that or, or mangle that in any way. Um, as I say, that's only if you're at um, full lock and the suspension is kind of at full travel. Um, if you're ever driving and you're in a situation where, where it's like that, you've probably got other problems to worry about than hitting the, uh, the grease nipple. But it's good to finally get that on. That's the first time I've actually had pretty much working steering so um, I can't remember how many turns it's meant to be locked to lock but if we say that's one so that's one there so that was only about two turns uh, I can't remember what it is on in any of my other cars to compare but uh, The, uh, there isn't a lot of movement there. The other thing that's interesting is you can see how flexible the chassis is. Uh, you can probably see the whole thing is wobbling around there just through the force of the steering and that's, that's not even sitting on the ground. But that's entirely because the engine isn't in place and it doesn't have the engine steady bar sitting there. So once that's in place it locks it all together. have also been experimenting with rust removal um, using EDTA uh, mixed with water and it kind of works but it's so slow I don't think it's really doing anything much um, I have no idea what sort of concentrations you need uh, this looks like it's not doing anything because the metals all oily so it's not even touching it I'll probably have to de degrease those first this was a very old rusty exhaust 
but it is doing something. Um, it is extremely slow, but you can see there it has actually removed the rust. Um, so it's worth doing some more experiments, I think. Um, that's not too bad. I mean, it, it, it's the same process that, that molasses rust removal works with, uh, the, the chemical reaction. So that's very slow. It works very, very well, but it is very slow and it's very smelly. So I thought I'd give this a try. Uh, like I say, it's kind of working. These were some rusty tools that I put in. And again, uh, I probably need to degrease everything a bit better before I put it in these solutions, but that's actually removed quite a bit of the rust. Um, these were some punches that were also rusty. And they're coming up okay. Um, this one I tried a much, much higher concentration of the the EDTA stuff. So I'll keep playing with that uh, because everything gets uh, damp in here. I've been spraying it all with uh, things like WD-40 or wiping it, wiping it with oil, which is why um, it all needs degreasing before I put it in there. But uh, this was the stuff I was using. It's not very expensive, so it was worth buying a bag just to experiment with. I'll keep playing with it and see if that works but uh, for actually painting things like the back plates here they still need a good wire brush or they need to go through the blaster I started just cleaning up the edges a little bit with the hammer and dolly but nothing too serious I need to press them flat again they're not sitting flat but um, before I paint anything such as the rear axle of actually got some phosphoric acid solution coming hopefully which will um, be much better for just sort of cleaning all this stuff up same with the uh, the steering column and then I can paint those kind of things and for now I'm just going to keep going and paint everything with the um, the black engine enamel because it's a nice thin coating I like how it looks and then when I decide what I'm actually going to do with the car it'll be easy enough to to remove it or paint over it um, it's fairly resistant to solvents. I should actually see what solvents will take it off, but uh, something will. This is our cat prison and zoo full of cats and dogs. So we're making more of a start on the garden now. We've had piles of things delivered including firewood and different mulches and compost and things. Um, I have to be fairly quick with this because it's sundown so the light's going down. But uh, the light here is always amazing. So I think I've mentioned that's heading south. So that's the east. And the sun usually is setting just down there behind the, the hills. And as it sets, we get really, really golden sort of light. Uh, and we usually see it across the fields here and up on the hills. But this is one of the flower beds, I guess. Um, I'm not sure exactly what's in there. And there's been some planting around the base of this tree. So there's various bulbs, possibly lilies, I'm not sure, been planted around here. Um, we put in this garden, sort of between the pods. Uh, I'm leaving it up to Charter to figure out what to grow, so she's quite into it. She's figuring out all the right sort of plants and um, lots of native plants. We want things that are going to attract the birds, 
uh, going to look nice and going to grow well here. Uh, I think cat prison I've shown before. Now we know where the main gardens are going. We're going to look at doing the the tunnel again and possibly build, put some wire netting or something up in the tree there so the cats can actually play in the tree. Uh, it's quite a nice tree this, a um, eucalyptus tree. And there's all sorts of birds in here. So somewhere right at the top, there's a little fantail who's usually around here. We think there's a nest up there. We've seen parakeets. Um, lots of poo geckos, of course. There are some ducks in the middle there at the moment. Just all sorts of little birds all, all around here. So we want to put in a lot of trees to attract them. So more trees in here. Um, I did have some car parts stored in here, but it's, it's not really dry enough um, for metal parts. So the job over the next few days will be moving all of that new firewood into the, the thing here. Yeah, this is just the garden there. Just got a little, little garden here, mainly just to protect the, the sump there just to remember that that's there so we just put a garden in the middle uh, more trees just a couple of trees in there in the middle here will be a sort of courtyard so started putting a few things in there we want to build a kind of seat type thing along there uh, we also want to capture all the water from the the spouting on the little pods because we can use that of course in the garden. Uh, what else have we done? I do want to put something in those planter boxes at some point. I have some interesting cars just went past. Um, made a little ramp for the tractor to go into the little shed and just a really simple latch for the to hold the door because otherwise the wind tends to blow it around a lot let's see what else uh, these posts these little sticks are just here um, we were trying to figure out where the lowest point is where it gets quite wet so we know what fruit trees to plant where so certain trees don't mind having their roots a bit wet so they'll go along here, so probably fijoas, things like that. Um, we want to plant fruit trees, um, apricot, olive trees, various bits and pieces. There's the spa pool doing its little cleaning cycle. Um, you may notice this black plastic mesh, which we've now put all the way around, all the way around here. Um, so, unlike Trump, basically, this is our wall to keep Mexicans in. So, we want to be able to enclose this area fully so the Chihuahuas can run around out here and we don't have to worry about the little idiots because sometimes they do like to sort of run off. So, you can see there's more more of the black mesh here um, we're going to get pavers to put along the bottom just to hold the bottom piece uh, because they're such tiny dogs they'll get through quite small little spaces so I do just need to put another piece of wood or something down there because they will get out that that corner uh, we've seen them do that uh, we've got fruit trees here we're going to put our compost piles in the corner here so sort of one here and one there, so we can move the compost from one to the other pretty easily. And we're, we've almost removed all the sand now, and we're going to turn the, the old sand pit into a vegetable garden. So a lot of that mulch and compost is going to go back into here. Hopefully with the dog mesh around, it'll, it'll help keep the rabbits out as well, because there have been rabbits around here. Uh, we've been putting in fruit trees. That one's a grapefruit tree um, I just put the rubber band on the stake so I can see if it's actually growing or not 
we're probably going to put something here so I was going to build a little almost like a hitching post a little low hitching post there and then run strings from there up to that beam so I run them up and down and we'll grow something up there peas or something I don't know uh, we've put in more fruit trees this lemon tree was here when we moved in and that seems to be doing quite well and Charter's put in this vegetable garden so we've just sort of edged it we'll be slowly filling that up with various plants and things so there'll be more vegetables and things in there um, I think the silver beet was already here when we moved in but most of the other stuff has been planted um, it's a little bit noisy fairly busy road uh, surprisingly because it doesn't go anywhere but uh, I think these are all things we've put in um, are they broccoli I'm not sure uh, leaves as well have all been put in uh, the strawberries were already here we had quite a few nice strawberries but uh, now they all just seem to rot and the peas have been put in and they're starting to come up as well this sort of rock garden with all this lavender I guess it is was in here already so um, we've just been putting in various succulents and things just in this corner so we still need to dog proof the gate um, so dog proof this gate you can see the plastics there it just needs to be um, on this one it's just cable tied to the wire fence and we'll do the same on that but we'll have to let the plastic drag on the ground just so they can't get underneath it but you can see how all through there has now been closed off so they can't get through uh, and that's kind of how it's looking at the moment 